In this video, we'll have a look at how we can compare two or more Kaplan-Meier curves with a log rank test. We'll first briefly review the basics of the Kaplan-Meier curve that we discussed in a previous video. Suppose that we have only six people in a study that started in 2010 and ended 12 years later. Note that the individuals entered the study at different time points. This person survived 8.8 .8 years after entering the study, whereas this person died after only 2.4 years. This person decided to leave the study after 3.4 years. Since we do not know the survival time of this person, it is defined as a censored observation. Since these two persons were alive at the end of the study, they are also defined as censored observations because we do not know how long they will survive after the study has ended. To draw a Kaplan-Meier curve, one usually creates a table where the individuals are ordered based on their survival time. Since person number 4 had the shorter survival time, we place that person first in this table. This person survived 2.4 years. Note that we should also fill in the survival time of the censored observations. Then we fill in the number of events or deaths at time t. For example, after 2.4 years, one person died. Since person number 6 left the study after 3.4 years, we set this element to 0 because no one died. Remember that this column represents the number of individuals that are at risk before the event takes place. Since we have six individuals in our study, there will be six people that are alive before the first death occurs. Then there will be five left after the first death. Since person number six left the study, there will be four individuals that are left in the study that are at risk of dying before the second death occurs. Then we calculate the fraction that has survived after the event. For example, since 1 out of 6 died, about 83% of the individuals are alive after the first person died. Since we lost contact with this patient after 3.4 years, 100% of the individuals are still alive after the observed time for the censoring. Finally, we calculate the survival probabilities, where we move the previous probability down here and multiply with the value in the column to the left. Based on these survival probabilities, we can draw the following Kaplan-Meier curve. Note that the ticks on the curve represent sensory. Suppose that we now had two groups that we like to compare. For example, the five individuals in group A could for example represent a group of cancer patients that are on a traditional treatment, whereas the six cancer patients in group B are on a new type of treatment. By studying the curves, it is clear that the patients in group B, the ones on a new treatment, survive much longer compared to the ones on the old treatment. The median survival time in group A is only 2.5 years, whereas the median survival time in group B is 8.8 .8 years. However, the difference we observe could just be due to chance. To determine if there is a significant difference in survival between the two groups, we can use a log rank test. The null hypothesis of the log rank test states that there is no difference in survival between the two groups. In other words, the null hypothesis states that the two populations A and B will have the same survival curves. In this example, we use a two-sided alternative hypothesis, which states that there is a difference in survival between the two groups. As with most other statistical tests, we here use a significance level of 0.05. If we would compute a log rank test in a statistical software tool R or SPSS, we would obtain a chi-squared test statistic of 4.76 and a p-value of about 0.03. 
since this p-value is lower than the significance level. Reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is a significant difference in survival between the two groups. Since the ones on the new treatment have a generally longer survival compared to the ones on the traditional treatment, we can further conclude that the new treatment results in significantly longer survival. We'll now see how to calculate the log rank test by hand. These are the survival times of the individuals in the two groups. Note that the individuals have been ordered based on their survival times. The asterisk represents censored observations. The blue color indicates that the individuals belong to group A, whereas the orange color indicates that the individuals belong to group B. Next, we enter the number of events for the two groups in separate columns. The first person who died in the study belongs to group A, which means that we fill in a 1 in this column, which represents the number of observed events in the first group, which is group A in our example. Since no one died in group B at the current time point, we set this column to 0. After 2.4 years, one person died in group B. After 2.8 years, one person in group A left the study. This is indicated in the following element with a zero and with an asterisk to denote that the censored observation belongs to group A. The following columns show the number of individuals in the two groups that are at risk before an event takes place. Since group A initially consists of five individuals, and group B consists of six individuals. There are five in group A and six in group B that are at risk before the first person dies. Since the first person who died belonged to group A, there will now be four patients left in group A. Note that there are still six patients in group B at risk before the next event takes place. Since the second death also occurs in group A, there will be three left in group A and still six left in group B. After the first person dies in group B, we will reduce the number of patients that are at risk in group B, but not in group A. Similarly, a censored observation in group A will only reduce the number at risk in group A but will not affect the numbers in group B. We will now calculate the expected number of events, which is the number of events we would expect if the null hypothesis is true. In other words, if there is no difference in survival between the two groups, what number of deaths should we expect in the two groups? We have in total 11 individuals in our study, and since one person died, we would expect that 0.455 individuals in group A would die, whereas 0.545 subjects in group B would die at the current time point. I know, it sounds a bit strange to expect that a half person dies, but that is what is expected in theory. What we actually observed was one death in group A and no death in group B. The expected number can be calculated like this. Let's calculate the expected number of deaths of the first group, which is group A in our example. We plug in the observed total number of deaths at the current time point, the number at risk in the first group, and the total number at risk, and do the math. For example, this expected number is calculated like this. Since the first two individuals that die belong to group A, the expected number of individuals that will die in group B will increase, whereas the expected number will decrease for group A. This is due to that if there will be an equal chance for survival in the two groups, we would expect that if one person dies in group A, then the next person who will die should belong to group B given that there is about the same number of subjects in the two groups.
will now calculate the variance of the two groups. To save time, I will here only calculate the variance of group A. To calculate this value, we plug in the expected number of events in group A, the total number of observed events, and the total number at risk before the event. The total number at risk in group A before the event. And do the math. Note that we here set this last value to zero, because the calculations will otherwise involve that we divide by zero when there is only one person at risk. We now sum the columns and compute the chi-square test statistic for group A like this, where we plug in the sum of the absurd events in group A, the sum of the expected events, and the variance of group A. This will result in a test statistic of 4.76. Note that if we would compute the same thing for group B, we would end up with the exact same value. Then we use the statistical software tool to calculate the area to the right hand side of 4.76 in a chi square distribution with one degree of freedom. The degrees of freedom is equal to the number of groups minus one. This area will correspond to our p-value. Note that there are different ways to compute a log rank test, which means that different statistical software tools might report different p-values. The calculations shown here are the same as the ones used in the R package survival. One can also calculate the test statistic like this, which is similar to the one used to compute a chi-square test where the expected numbers are in the denominator, and where we sum the calculations in the two groups. This will generate in a slightly different p-value. Finally, note that a log rank test can also be used to compare more than two groups, for example three groups, similar to the chi-square test and ANOVA. If you reject an null hypothesis, you know that at least one group significantly differs from the other two groups. You might then want to run a postdoc test where you compare pairs of groups separately, for example A versus B, B versus C and A versus C. This was the end of this video about the log rank test. In the next video we'll discuss the Cox proportional hazards regression, which can be used if we for example like to control for a variable when we compare the survival time between two groups.